You want your finances, your resources to last your family generation, about generation by generation. Our guys are reading a couple books this month, actually three books, but I'll, I'll mention these two books here. We're reading the, the 38 letters that John D. Rockefeller wrote to his son. And then I, as I was, I was ordering that book, you know, Amazon has these uh, suggested things. No, the opposite of that was Vanderbilt. Because Vanderbilt, before Rockefeller came about, if you ever watched the series, The Men Who Built America, the richest man in the world was Commodore Vanderbilt. It's the Commodore. He, the reason why they called him Commodore, because he was commanding steamboats to create trade with inside the Americas, right? To go from the East Coast, West, using steamboats. He created commerce. People needed his boats to move the products and the people from the East Coast, from the coastal shores, of the coastal states, inland. He made a lot of money doing that. Until one day he says, you know what? I don't think that's the feature anymore. Hey, fam, I'm selling the steamboat business and I'm going into the railroad business. What? Anyway, that multiplied his wealth even more. Even though everybody in his family thought he was crazy. Everybody's family thought he was nuts. But what do you do? You create the greatest railroad system in America. You establish this whole thing. Greatest wealth in America. Richest man in America at that time. Massive amounts of wealth. Matter of fact, Central University in Tennessee is now called Vanderbilt University because of honoring him. But when you look at, sadly, the book Vanderbilt, what has happened is the fortune he created in his generation, three, four generations after, it's been destroyed. Matter of fact, who wrote this book? Vanderbilt? Talk about the family wealth, the family fortune that lost it all, is a descendant of the Vanderbilt. His name, Anderson Cooper. His mother, Gloria Vanderbilt. And even in the book, Gloria Vanderbilt said, son, listen, you might hear about this tremendous wealth that this last name used to carry, but you got to know, there ain't no wealth for you to have. There's nothing in the trust fund. My brothers and sisters, my mom and dad, our aunts and uncles, they all blew through the money that Commodore Vanderbilt created in his generation. And son, you got to get a job just like everybody else now. It's Anderson Cooper. But the flip side to that is the... Rockefeller family, which the Rockefeller family to this day, five, six, going on seven generations deep now, are receiving money from the original trust fund that John D. Rockefeller set up in the early 1900s. Why? Because he created systems and process to protect the limiting beliefs and the greed beliefs of being a human being. One anticipated it, which is uh, Vanderbilt, and protected the money to pass on from generation to generation. By the way, I've met a gentleman named Mark Rockefeller. He's in the financial services industry. I said, by chance, are you related? He goes, yeah, I'm related, but we're not part of the rich side of the family. We got disinherited from the family wealth. Wow. So he's telling me, Mark, by the way, if you're watching, I'd love to reconnect with you. But Mark Rockefeller is part of the lineage of the Rockefeller family that got disinherited from the family's wealth because of somebody, what somebody did with limiting beliefs two, three generations before him. So there's a benefit to being aligned with smashing through limiting beliefs because then your family and the people you love and care about are blessed not only for your generation, but for multiple generations deep. You think what you do today just affects you. It doesn't. It affects a lot of the responsibilities and all the people that are around you that you recruit to work for your company, they recruit as vendors, they recruit as, as, as customers. They're affected by your obedience to your blessings, your business, your decisions, and smashing through your limiting beliefs.